click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends i welcome you all to the subject digital image processing this video is actually from chapter number 4 where we have collected all the methods for the betterment of visual quality with respect to the human vision perception so the methods are called image enhancement methods and we are working into the spatial domain the image plane represented by the spatial coordinates x and y so these are the image enhancement methods so in this chapter very first of all we understood what exactly the two principal areas of these image enhancement in spatial domain are that are intensity transformation functions and the spatial filtering for intensity transformation function whatever the enhanced image with the better visual quality we expected we determined these intensity values for the pixels by considering the original intensity value of the pixel only at that particular location but now onwards for the second principal area what we can call the spatial filtering we shall be determining the new intensity values by considering the neighborhood also hence this differentiates from the intensity transformations so up till now in the uh, intensity transformation family we have gone through the image negatives the application of logarithmic transformation power law transformation the working with the histogram histogram equalization intensity level slicing bit plane slicing the contrast adjustment contrast stretching sometimes we have also referred to it as so now the second family again motive is same for the betterment of visual quality hence the image enhancement so let us begin with the mechanism first of all to see the mechanics of spatial filtering so here we can begin with the topic the mechanics of spatial filtering very important in the chapter image enhancement in spatial domain so the area is digital image processing the prototype you can see here now to talk about this particular topic as we have gone through the several operations working in the same motive some operations work with the values of the image pixels in the neighborhood and the corresponding values of the sub image so see here there it is the role of two uh, images we can say one original image and one sub image that was not the case into the earlier the family of intensity transformation functions so that has uh, that should be having the same dimensions also so the neighborhood dimensions and that of the sub image should match here this sub image is also called as a filter so we shall be calling for the spatial domain it will be a spatial filter it can also be termed as mask kernel template or sometimes window also so the values into this particular filter sub image are referred to as coefficients not the pixels because the pixel is the term that we generally use for the original image to process for or the output image also so these are the coefficients that tend to change the values of the original pixel intensities hence we call them the coefficients now the concept of filtering as we know from the background of signal processing actually has its roots into the frequency domain the tool most potential is the fourier transformation and then further to take the inverse fourier transformation but as far as the signal processing is concerned the only one dimension data we get it processed by this particular filtering but for the image a uh, data as we have the two dimensions and if we have the operations performed directly on to the pixel intensities we are not using the transformation there so we shall be referring this particular domain as spatial filtering the mechanics of spatial filtering the title what we have given the details we can see with the help of new figure on to the next slide the figure shall be displayed for this particular title mechanics of spatial filtering so it will be like this so you can see that here it is the image plane defined by these particular lines here the dimensions we represent for this axis x and for this axis y so we can say that x shall define us what exactly the number of row is there for a specific pixel and y shall decide what exactly the column number for the specific pixel is so in this image plane the image plane represented the image 
f of x y so for the specific location x y f shall be giving us the intensity value so intensity value is to be stored for f here so on to this entire image plane we have to work with a sub image so the sub image is also called as a mask here so here the mask is represented by the dimension 3 by 3 so this mask has certain coefficients hence this particular mask has been expanded here so this mask has w in bracket minus 1 comma minus 1 minus 1 comma 0 so these bracket terms are actually giving us the locations the center is represented by w of 0 comma 0 so this certain mask is operating over the image plane so below this particular mask there will be the actual pixel intensities the pixels shall be represented as f of x y f of x minus 1 y f of x plus 1 y f of x y minus 1 f of x plus 1 y plus 1 the central pixel and the neighborhoods there that are directly lying under this particular mask so a 3 by 3 mask with the coefficients and the image section with pixels directly under 3 by 3 mask that have been magnified here in this particular figure here so now we can have the information that to work for the spatial filtering the process involves moving of the filter mask from every point to point into the image in the figure you have seen the image plane so the axis x and y where it crosses that is actually the origin hence for the image sample we can say that the starting point for each and every operation that is origin the upper left corner so at each point x and y after moving this particular filter mask the filtering shall be done and the resultant whatever it is we call it the response of the filter so this response is calculated by having a predefined relationship predefined relationship of the neighborhoods of this particular pixels the linear spatial filtering we can say then the next category we can say the non linear filtering also so this linear filtering the response is actually the sum of the products of the filter coefficients and the corresponding image pixels for the span of the uh, filter mask we can say for the neighborhood for the 3 by 3 dimensions if you take into the figure the result sometimes also denoted by capital r or we can say response of the linear filtering with the filter mask at the point xy in the image is given by the equation capital r obtained by the multiplication of w of minus 1 minus 1 a filter coefficient with the pixel intensity value at f of x minus 1 y minus 1 so this way every coefficient will be there for every pixel into that much of span of neighborhood so this is the first term for one filter coefficient and one filter uh, and one image pixel this is the second one this is the third one so this way depending on to the dimension so here it is the 3 by 3 mask so total there will be the nine terms into this particular equation to get the resultant response here so it is the sum of the products of the mask coefficients with the corresponding pixels directly under the mask here so here we can make a note that while having this particular uh, mask operation there will be the center of the neighborhood that is the pixel under consideration uh, represented by xy and the filter mask will be having its center that is w 0 by 0 so these two should be matched here and then the computation for the summation of the products shall be taking place now in a general right now we are discussing about the linear filtering the f is the image represented it has the size capital m by n so entire image plane what we have represented into the figure mm -hmm. and the filter mask in general is having m by n so earlier we have shown for 3 by 3 so if it is the case the formulation of new image sample shall be by this particular formula the summation for s is equal to minus a to a next summation for t parameter minus b to b the filter coefficients Uh, mask here w of s of t and the image under consideration f of x plus s y plus t here so here the variables a and b hold the values that is m minus 1 by 2 n minus 1 by 2 here 
and to generate the complete filtered image the equation must be applied for the complete range of small x dimension ranging from 0 to m minus 1 the total number of pixels are capital m and similarly for uh, second dimension y shall range from 0 to capital n minus 1 where total number of uh, pixels onto that dimension is capital n here the process of linear filtering as shown into the previous equation just now we discussed is similar to the frequency domain concept called as convolution. For this reason the linear spatial filtering is sometimes also referred to as the convolution mask with an image. Similarly the filter masks are sometimes called as convolution mask or convolution kernels. Now there is second approach to have non-linear spatial filtering. They also operate onto the neighborhoods but there is no linearity hence the name non-linear the mechanics of sliding a mask over the image is same there as like the case of linear the filtering operation based conditionally on the values of the pixels into the neighbor under consideration neighborhood under consideration we can say that they do not explicitly use the coefficients in the sum of the products manner described by the earlier equation the best example for non-linear spatial filtering is median gray level filtering so as simple averaging we can go for the earlier linear case the median gray level value we can determine the example will be for the task of noise reduction hence the visual quality can be better way the computation of the median is non-linear operation hence the computation of the uh, variance it is very much similar to as like the computation of various we can say here Whatever happens when the center of filter approaches the border of the image, we have the two approaches either to pad it with the zeros or to have pixel replication. So for that purpose, we consider the simplicity of a square mask of size n by n. At least one edge of such a mask will coincide with the border of the image when the center of the mask is at distance n minus 1 by 2 pixels away from the border of the image. If the center of the mask moves any closer to the border, one or more rows or columns of the mask will be located outside the image plane here. The simplest way to handle this situation just now I talked about to limit the excursions of the center of the mask to be at a distance no less than n minus 1 by 2 if the pixel dimension for the mask is n by n the square one. The resulting filtered image will be the smaller than the original one but all the pixels into the filter image will have been processed with a full mask here. If the result is required to be same as that of the original size, then the approach is employed to filter all the pixels with the only section of the mask that is fully contained into the image. With this approach, there will be the bands of the pixels near the border that will have been processed with the partial filter mask. Other approaches that we discussed that is zero padding or replicating the rows or columns. The padding is then stripped off at the end of the process. This keeps the size of the filtered image the same as that of the original image providing for spatial filtering purpose but the values of the padding will have an effect onto the near edges that becomes more prevalent as the size of the mask increases because the number of neighborhoods will get increased. The only way to obtain a perfectly filtered image is to accept somewhat smaller filtered image by limiting the excursions of the center of the filter mask to distance no less than n minus 1 by 2 pixels from the border of the original image. So the conclusion we can make that though the zero padding and the pixel replications are the options, if the filter mask comes at the border, it shall be resulting into the somewhat errors that are not expected from the filtering. So for that purpose we can go for lowering out the dimension of the resultant image as compared to that of the original image. So by the next lecture we shall be working on to have a simple demonstration in the MATLAB environment for the spatial domain filtering. We shall be accepting the input image and we shall try to have the spatial domain filtering of simple type to get the filtered image. So if you like to have the topics of the digital image processing and want to have 
more details into it along with the MATLAB demonstrations, practicing miscellaneous problems and the theory details, you can subscribe to EKEDA channel. Thank you.